Hi, my name is Father Joseph Mary, and welcome to Ask a Capuchin, where we answer questions on Catholicism and the Capuchin Order submitted through our social media. Are priests different from friars, and are there Capuchin priests? So the word friar actually comes from a Latin word meaning brother. And so when someone is discerning the Franciscan, the Capuchin way of life, they're actually discerning becoming a brother, a friar, a friar's minor, a little brother. Now, in addition to that, some of our friars also feel called to the priesthood, but that's secondary. That's almost a vocation within a vocation. And so the first and primary thing is, are you called to this way of life as a brother among brothers? And after discerning that, which takes many years, a friar, uh, the friar may also feel that he's called to be a priest. And if he is, that discernment's done within a community, and the community also discerns with him to help him in his discernment. Yeah, we think you are called to be a priest. And if that is the case, he'll go to seminary like any diocesan priest would do, and he'll study and he'll be ordained and he'll function within the Capuchins in a, in a, in a sacramental ministry, in addition to whatever other ministries among the poor he might do. Our next question is, how are Capuchins different from other orders? Every order is different. Every order, or most orders, were founded under the inspiration of some saint or some holy person who founded the order for a very specific need. Capuchins arose in the 16th century, but they're really a reform order of the Franciscans who were uh, begun by the, the inspiration and the life of St. Francis. Our life is uh, modeled on the imitation and example of St. Francis, our fraternal life spent together as a gospel brotherhood, and serving the poor and the marginalized in society. That's very different than something like a, a Jesuit might do. A Jesuit, while they may live together in a, in a way that's somewhat similar to ours, their primary role is to teach and to do spiritual direction. For us, our primary role is our fraternal gospel life and serving, in the, serving among the poor. So the next question, what makes Capuchins different than other Franciscan orders? If you type in Franciscans in Google, you're going to find thousands of religious orders. There's many, many different expressions of Franciscans and of imitating St. Francis. The Capuchins were a very specific reform movement that wanted to put emphasis on the priority of prayer, such as they saw in the life of St. Francis, who was constantly withdrawing to beautiful places in Assisi, to caves and to countrysides in order to spend lots of time in prayer. So the Capuchins were a reform movement that put its priority on prayer, and the prayer has to come before everything else. Our Constitution say that all other things should be subservient to our prayer life. In addition, uh, our observance of uh, poverty, uh, the early Capuchins were extremely frugal. In fact, uh, uh, one of the Jesuit saints writes that you should uh, not smell like a Capuchin. They were known for their, their odor because they didn't bathe very often. Thankfully, we don't observe that same thing today. So the Capuchins were known for their priority of prayer and their, their frugal way of life. What do you do when you get annoyed and sick of someone in your community? That does happen. We live together in community. We don't often or most of the time choose the guys that we get to live with, but we're an order of brothers. And so we, there's a wide range of, of experience and age within our community. And it does happen at times that you end up with a guy who just rubs you the wrong way or you, he gets on your nerves or you get on his nerves. and so. You can have little disputes and arguments within the community. How do we deal with that? Well, ideally, we deal with that in the way Jesus told us to. You know, he says, so what if you love those who love you? What's that? But can you love your enemy? And certainly our brother isn't our enemy, but oftentimes we have to think in terms of conversion that that brother is put into our life for a reason. That maybe it's very easy for us to get along with some of the brothers, but this brother's here and he, He's calling forth in me impatience and anger and whatever else. And my role as a brother is to learn to love him. And as Jesus says, uh, that's what's going to cause me to grow in my life is being with the people who I find hard to love and striving to love them because love is a decision. Love is not an emotion. Emotionally, we might get along well with a lot of the brothers, but I have to make a decision to love this one particular brother. And that can be very difficult, but that's part of conversion and of growing in the life of a Capuchin. Our next question is, how important is the beard to modern Capuchins? Do you in your day-to-day -day life hold beards with the same esteem in which they used to be held? It's an interesting question. <laughs> we have beards are very popular today. You see more and more people wearing, wearing beards and we have uh, no shave November and kind of uh, catchy little things like that. In the early days of uh, the Capuchin reform when we, we first began, uh, the beard was uh, something that they adopted from the Camaldolese monks who had big, long beards. 
And it was actually stipulated in our earliest legislation, our constitution, that you had to have a beard because it was natural, manly, austere, and severe in imitation of Christ and the apostles. And so our early Capuchins had great big beards. And that really continued all the way up and almost until the, the Second Vatican Council when many constitutions of religious orders were uh, rewritten in order to, to go back to the original inspiration of the founder. And at that time, the beard no longer became mandatory. However, many of our, our guys continued to wear the beard as part of the, our tradition, part of what we've always done. Um, certainly, we many of our men don't have the great big beards like they used to have, um, but most of our guys wear some form of beard. So a follow-up question to that, when the beard was still mandatory, would someone who had a hard time growing facial hair have a hard time fitting in with the Capuchins? Well, the hard, sad truth is that if he couldn't grow a beard, he probably wouldn't have been admitted to the Capuchins because it was legislative, which means it was law. You had to be able to grow a beard. And we've actually, uh, there's stories of, of men actually being told no, that they could not join because they couldn't grow a beard. So the beard was very important uh, in the early Capuchins. However, we have to remember that that was a time when uh, a great importance was placed on external common observances. Now, today we don't do that as much. Maybe we need to get back more to those common observances, but uh, today uh, we would certainly never kick a guy out because he couldn't grow a, a beard. <laughs> if you would like to see more videos like this, uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or, social, or Facebook and just put your question in the comments. Christ.